Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at this rocket plane. And this episode's a little bit inspired by Joe Telling's uh, printing of this plane, much larger though on his G Max. But uh, you know, my goal here is to prove that you know size really doesn't matter. It's how you use your rocket plane that's important. However, the idea that struck me that Joel was showing is that there is actually uh, a stanchion inside if my mouse works inside these jet engines because when I went to print it because uh, several of the viewers out there were asking about printing something taller on the Wanhao for a couple different reasons how does the motor interact with the top of the carriage etc I decided to print this out and when I jumped over to Cura and I sliced it and I looked at the layers you know I, I was interested to see if it you know if it was simply uh, a manifestation of the model in the slicer or what the deal was because you can see in here it, there's there's nothing in 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 the middle of this and I can zoom up very close and we can look down and decide that engine and as we build up you can see there's nothing in there however they print and that's rather interesting because that should not be the case so um, that's why I loaded this up with in, into Tinkercad and, and took another look at the actual model itself. So I found that very interesting and I think one of the reasons that they exist is, is whatever application was used to create this needed to do this because of the flat service and to create a manifold. Um, so I figured eh, let's talk a little bit what a manifold is. So I want to jump over here to Wikipedia for a minute. Now during my day job I've uh, I've had the privilege to, you know, you know, work with or have access to or be involved with some of the largest private supercomputers there are for for numerous different things, uh, you know, fluid dynamic analysis, crash analysis, uh, all kinds of stuff, you name it, and. Uh, and it, you know, so the concept of this fascinates me because most of most of all the stuff fits around some mathematical topology, and that's why one of the things I find interesting about 3D printing is all these objects that we print are basically manifold. So, what is a manifold? I wanted to touch on that for a little bit. So a manifold is a topological space that resembles a Euclidean space near each point precisely each point of an n-dimensional manifold has a neighbor that is homeomorphic to the Euclidean space of n-dimension. What does that mean? Well that basically means you have a bunch of polygons that are grouped together to form a surface and in that surface needs to be complete because as one of the things you see here a figure eight cannot be um, cannot be a manifold because it crosses so and it's considered a singularity because of its points cross now I'm not going to dive into this too much however for all this stuff to work and for a slicer to work the STL or you know the, the stereolithography uh, file has to be a manifold it has to be watertight and so I wanted to share a little bit about this concept because I think that's that's what's causing the spires uh, in the jet in, in the jet engine components of the model and so maybe for some of you more geeky math types out there and, and that you can comment below I'd like to hear your thoughts on why this is the case so um, again kind of wanted to share that and what a manifold was why it's important because this is really really at the heart of 3d printing so uh, anyways I want to jump back over here for a second because we did send this out to the Wanhao so actually what I did is I printed this on the Wanhao and I also printed down the DaVinci 10A so what I'd like to do is let's let's send this to the printer let's send this to the Wanhao first so we'll do a time-lapse looking at the Wanhao print this out then what we'll do is we will uh, go to the DaVinci and then take a look if my mouse works here I can scroll out and we'll go to do a time-lapse on the DaVinci and then come back and take a look at both of them compare it talk about what we got and we'll go from there so get ready time-lapse
Welcome back to the real world. So we've printed out uh, both of these rockets. Um, so the clear one has been printed uh, on the Wanhao with the clear PLA. And the white one has been printed on the Da Vinci. Now i got to say the Da Vinci did a very, very nice job. So I want to show, show you guys the tip, make sure I'm getting it in there. The, the, the tip on this actually for the Da Vinci printed with the XYZ Craftware came out pretty darn good and actually um, you know it stuck to the bed to that easy stuff uh, pretty pretty good so some of this white stuff down here you're seeing you know it's me stressing to get it off the bed and there's still a little bit I have to clean up however the body and these fins are perfect whereas the one how these are pretty gnarly it did not do a nice job on these pieces so uh, I'm not exactly sure why that is, so um, I don't know if you can see that. I'm not even sure I can clean that up. And then also the tip, um, oof, that's still not not that good. So I'm not as impressed with that as I was before. So again, I'm still um, still. It, I don't know, being a little bit maybe under impressed. Again, I'm thinking it it did a better job with the other hot end, so I'm not 100% sure yet what what the problem is. Now, for those that tell me I need to check the um, extrusion since changing the gear, I have, and I'll have a two-part video coming out on that as well as I built um, a thing I'm putting up on Thingiverse for that. So it's going to take me a while to edit up that video. However, this thing is spot on when it comes to the e steps and everything for the extruder. So I know it's not the extruder and the amount of plastic that it's putting out. Um, so I'm going to have to do a little bit more searching. However, um, the Da Vinci clearly hands down kicked butt on this because I tell you guys, the Da Vinci hardware wise is I think a fantastic printer. Um, you know its main lacking is obviously its um, uh, you know software but you know even this, this sliced really really well. It took it took quite a while. However, the print I, I'm astonished at, at the quality of the print on this versus this. Um, I mean this is pretty darn good. It's just you know I'm a little bit disappointed I had such a hard time getting it off the bed. Um, that easy stuff maybe it's too good. Um, really tough because this has been this has also been printed on the XYZ uh, hollow. Because um, you may not know it, but there is an infill setting. You can select zero, and then behind it it says hollow, and it uh, prints an empty shell base type thing. Uh, but uh, yeah, where this one, you know, maybe maybe a bit of this is the PLA too. Now I printed this at uh, 205 degrees. I don't know. Maybe I'm printing it too hot. Maybe I'll try another one at say 200. Drop it down five degrees and see but again you can see that nose um, on this one leaves a lot to be desired and again the but here let me I can probably get these see if I can get them both in the frame so you can see the the differences in the noses so uh, again I, I'm again very surprised that Vinci did such a good job and then also make sure see if I can get them in here on the wings I don't know if you can see that on the wings, how it's right in here. So, anyways, I got to thank Joe Telling again for this uh, because he kind of got me looking at this, and I think I'm gonna play around a little bit more with this model um, because uh, I don't know if you can see. I'm not sure if the camera will pick that up. However, there is. There is that tube in here. It's meant to be a tube. 
I think, to, to keep it in manifold. Um, however, I really don't see it. Now, it may have just filled in with ABS, where the ABS might have expanded, but I really don't see it on the Da Vinci. Again, I can't get over uh, the quality of this print. This is really, really nice. Uh, just shocked. Again, you know, I got a little some stress whiteness in the ABS from trying to get it off the bed. I think next time I'll just print it on a raft and pry up the raft or something like that because I did I did print this one with a brim just to be on the safe side to keep it from pulling off because it was so tall. So so here you go. Um, printed something tall on the Wanhao. Um, experimented with their, took a deeper look at what a manifold is and how it affects your 3D object and uh, learned a few things. So again if you found this interesting, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, a lot more coming. Cheers! And subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.